What's going on, everybody? I'm going to wait for a few of you to uh, come on to the live. We got to talk about something that's very serious. You know, going into the new year, I'm expecting um, it to be a really great year for the kingdom. We've been saying that for a while. We've been talking about how, you know, we got to plant seed and how the Bible says that the sower walks arm in arm with the harvester. Not talking about money. I'm talking about, you know, your gifts, your talents, whatever God has called you to do. You know, it's one thing to know that you're called. But it's another thing to actually, you know, put the work in. The Bible says what? Faith without works is dead, you know. So you got to put the work in. If you're believing uh, God for, you know, you to be able to do some great things this year, you know what I'm saying? I, I would advise you put the seed in the ground, put your faith in God and watch him work. Uh, make sure that um, can you guys hear me? OK, is the sound OK? I'm going to play some clips. Um, this, this is just very concerning. Some of you probably seen it all over the Internet. This pastor in Atlanta, uh, he's a music artist as well. He's been trending for um, he did a baby dedication with the rapper the Brat. Uh, and then right after that, I guess for his New Year's service, they were swag uh, surfing and stuff like that. So we're going to play some clips. Um, I don't really um, ever call people like a wolf or anything unless like God tells me. But this guy's behavior is definitely very concerning. And I just think, you know, in the black church, you know, we have to be careful. Now, there's there's stuff in every church. You know, but, you know, the black community is very unique. The history in America, you know, a lot of different things. I think that there's sometimes just, you know, an identity crisis. We're trying to, you know, figure out, you know, who we are and things like that. And so they're just it causes there to be a lot of mess within um, the church. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of clips and we are going to talk about it. Now, some of you might not know uh, this who this individual is. But if you are, you know, part of, you know, the black community, African, uh, African-American community, you know, that church scene, you probably know uh this person very well. Now, what's so crazy is I just played one of his songs uh, last night during our New Year's um, service, which was super powerful. Oh, man, these people are so hungry at Firehouse. So, you know, we have church at three o'clock uh, Sundays. So some people are showing up to 2.30. You know, I'm here a lot earlier, but they were here all the way past midnight, you know, still praying, still worshiping. You would have never known that we had like a, a service by the time we got to the second service, you know, like just full of passion and stuff and, you know, truly hungry. So I love it. All right. So here we go. I got a lot of, uh, a lot of you logged in on the live, put my headphones on and we're going to go into this clip. Let me share my screen with you guys. All right. And so a couple different clips I want to play and here we go. Let me see if I can make this maybe a little bit bigger. All right, here we go. So the brat, uh, you know, she's a rapper, and you're going to see here, you know, this is her partner. Um, turn the phone down because I don't want to get a copyright strike. So that's the brat, the rapper, right? Obviously, you see what community she's a part of. This is Bishop William Murphy. He's doing a baby dedication. All right. Now, some of you are going to say right away, well, what's wrong? They're just trying to dedicate uh, you know, the baby, you know, to the Lord. Well, the issue number one is when you do a baby dedication, you're saying that you're going to, the Bible says, train up a child in the way that they should go. Right. So you're going to train up the child. You're going to live a life that, um, you know, is reflective of what the Bible says, but you live in that kind of lifestyle, you know, LGBTQ, you know what I'm saying? You can't do that rightly. Right. So the whole house is already in dysfunction. So he shouldn't have done this. All right. He, because it's like you're coming into agreement with it. So you see the clip here, you know, small gathering. Um, and this is just one of the things that was problematic. I'm going to show you a couple of clips throughout the years. All right. So let me. Um, you see the point, right? We go through it. Your service. Now, now here's my problem. Let me pause it real quick, right? So some of you know that song from your club days, Swag Surfing. Now, some of you are not going to like what I say, um, but I don't see nothing wrong if they just played the instrumental, right? And so you guys want to dance or whatever, turn up. 
maybe have somebody rap some Jesus stuff over the beat, take dominion over the beat. But you hear when the beat drops, if, and if, uh, I saw somebody defending this in the comments. They were like, oh, well, they weren't, they didn't play the whole song. They only played some of the lyrics and then they typed the lyrics out. But I'm pretty sure when it drops, it says, I'm on hypnotic, right? Right from the jump. And some of the people are in there singing it with their whole uh, chest. Now, I'm not religious when it like you just seen our service the other day, right? We were in there dancing. Uh, obviously, we're dancing to some of the music that we made. Sometimes I put on, you know, an instrumental beat. I just think it's not wise to allow that, that stuff to be in the atmosphere. But let's keep, you know, playing the uh, the video. That's not the only thing. So those are just two incidences. Um, but it gets a little bit worse, all right? Oh, there's that. Let's get through. It turned up. This is another video. Uh, they're doing some kind of outreach out there, I guess, or something. And he's got, I think it is uh, Megan the Stallion, Stallion playing in the background. Yeah, I mean, this girl, so 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 yeah that's just you know that's a very foul song right and i'm just gonna play these clips all right so you can see it for yourself here's another now here's where it gets really crazy all right listen to this i don't have a right to tell you that and somebody said well some uh super religious person who got a bunch of sin in their life said well abstinence is the answer well you didn't abstain And what kills me is people out there protesting already had one. I'm out of board, honey. You had one in your younger years. So today, proudly, we dedicate, uh, we dedicate babies in our church. So this is Jamal Bryant. I'm not, this video is not about him, but when I downloaded it, this clip was attached. But he's also talking about abortion. They're coming at this time uh, because uh, we believe that children are the future. Uh, but we also believe that mothers have the right to elect where it is that they are in the season and the stages of their life. And they should not be criminalized for making decisions that, that will best suit them. For I'm sick of people who don't have... So right there, all right, you see, okay, we're talking about the music. Some people want to argue... You know, I don't see nothing wrong with this. I don't see how you're a Christian and they're talking about filthy stuff and they're talking about the world and you're just, you say you're filled with the spirit of God. The Bible says light has no fellowship with darkness, but you don't see nothing wrong with it. Like you can listen to that stuff and it doesn't bother you. It doesn't convict you. That's suspect to me. I, I wonder if you even feel with the Holy Spirit. So you can argue about that. You can argue about the swag surfing stuff, but now we're crossing over into him talking about you know, the abortion and a woman's right to choose, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so very lukewarm, very anti-Bible. And let's play this last clip. Options trying to make me feel bad because I didn't choose right. Didn't nobody want you. It was easy for you to live right. Wasn't nobody throwing it at you. So right here, he's pretty much saying, and I get what he's saying, right? And this is what I always tell people. Just because somebody's saying something and it sounds right, and it, it sounds good, you have to question the motive and the spirit behind it. Essentially, he's saying it's easy for some of you to live righteous because you're ugly, you know what I'm saying, or nobody's attracted to you, you're not that attractive. So for me, it's 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 harder for me to live right, or himself rather, you're going to see in a clip, it's harder for him to live right because he's so attractive and he's so desirable. Holiness is still right. Holiness was your only option. Y'all talk back to me. Y'all know some of them. Y'all excuse me if this offends anybody. I don't want to offend you. But they were too heavy to have options. You didn't have options because you had a body odor. I'm just going to keep it real. He seems a little zesty. When you look like this, you got options. Look at, look at your neighbor, tell him when you look like this, when you smell like I smell, man, matter of fact, let me move away from you right now because I feel your flesh. You looking at me too much. 
Let me bring you back. Let me bring you back. Look, 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 look at somebody telling me I'm your brother and you my sister. We ain't it. Well, let me just bring it on. Tell them I mean, you my sister and I'm your sister. We ain't dating. So, I mean, I think that's enough of that, right? The point is, guys, and I'm going to keep this real short. You see that he has the whole, you know, preaching voice, uh, kind of charismatic. Um, he has, you know, a, a song that's actually, you know, the song is pretty good. Um, it's encouraging. You know, I've played it through the years. And so m the reason why I do these kind of videos is not for clout. It's not for, you know, views. I just want everybody to really understand there's a whole crowd of people there and they're just cheering it on and they see nothing wrong with it. Now, some of you, you're watching this and you're like, yo, <clears throat> you know, that's off. It's not sitting right in my spirit. Same thing like <clears throat> the video, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about Pagani. He said something. He since apologized for it, but everybody was just cheering it on. So just because you go to a church and it's full of people, just because you go to a church and everybody's cheering it on, right? Just because you go to a church and the music is great and you get goosebumps from the music, it doesn't mean that God is with that individual. It doesn't mean, like, like I always tell you guys, a lot of people can't tell the difference between anointing and talent. Some people are just charismatic. Some people are just very gifted. But just because they're operating in a gifting doesn't mean that they're that they're anointed. It doesn't mean that God is with them. It doesn't mean that the spirit of God is there. It doesn't mean that the presence of God is there. It doesn't mean that God is backing up what they do. Now, especially when you've seen him talking about abortion, clearly God is not in agreement with what he's saying over that pulpit. And so the danger is, right, um, a lot of times Satan will you know, you have these popular uh, preachers and prophets and pastors and trendy churches. And I said this the other day, the devil doesn't mind if you do your Christian thing, right? So most people who are at that church, and he, even if I brought him here and I talked to him, he would say, yeah, he's a Christian. You know, he believes in God. He loves Jesus. Everybody's a Christian until it gets biblical. Now, please understand that none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. You know, everything that I'm saying about him Somebody will say about me. Somebody will say about somebody else. Right? Everybody's calling everybody false and things like that. So my point is that when you see that stuff, you got to pray about it. You got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Clearly, when you're saying, you know, it's okay for a woman to get an abortion. And he said a lot of other questionable stuff. I haven't even showed you guys all the clips. When it doesn't line up with this Bible, we have a problem. OK, now we know that everybody interprets the Bible in their own way and everybody has opinion and everybody thinks that the other person is teaching the Bible wrong. But the reason why I do these videos is I want you to just really seek God for yourself, because the people that go to that church, right, they might have a relationship with that pastor and they might have relationships within the church. And because you got all these people around you and everybody's churning, you don't see nothing is wrong, right? You're, you're under some kind of delusion because we're all in it. And it's like, hey, if sometimes when we have numbers, we feel like we're right, okay? And that's the danger. So just because you have people that are supporting what you do, just because you have people cheering on what you do, just because you know you have people who are validating what you do, doesn't mean that God has validated. And so I just get on here every time with the same message, guys, that there's a lot of mess in the church. No, none of us are not perfect, but we can't ignore the fact that the Bible says there'll be doctrines of devils, seducing spirits, that in the last days there will be perilous times and a great falling away. There's a lot of nonsense that's going on in the church. And, and the reality is, if you're speaking things that go against the word of God, you're anti-God. Now, I understand, you know, pastors sometimes say, we're learning, we're growing, we're not perfect, you know, uh, we make mistakes. But it's like, okay, where do we draw the line? You know what I'm saying? Like, any pastor who's been preaching for 10, 15, 20 years, they'll tell you, like, they've grown, they've evolved, maybe something. They, they preach Psalms 23 one way. But then when they got more understanding and revelation, they preach it differently. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about what? You're talking about abortion. Okay. So um, a lot of these preachers and influencers and, you know, worship leaders, they really love the world. Like they have a love for the world. And so they want to be accepted by the world. And so through the videos that I just showed you at the beginning, you see a pattern of behavior, right? So swag surfing. Hey, if you played the instrumental, cool. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not going to be mad, but you, you got the whole church in there. I'm on hypnotic, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and just going crazy saying it with their whole chest. 
and to have that kind of passion behind it, the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I guarantee you a lot of those people in the church drinking, getting high. It is like that at a lot of churches. This is why I said the devil doesn't mind if you do your Christian thing. There's a lot of people in America, they say, oh, I'm a Christian, but everything about them is just like the world. They're a Christian, but they can still get an abortion. They're a Christian. They can still get high. They're a Christian. They can still drink. They can still cuss you out. They're a Christian and they can still dress in modest. They don't have to dress modest. You know, so where do we draw the line? You don't have to do everything the way that Marcus does it or the way that we do it, but you better work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and make sure that what you're doing lines up with the word of God. You got to make sure what you're doing, right, is what God has called you to do. And it's not just, oh, well, I'm cool with the pastor, so I think I'm cool with God. And that's the danger that we're living in. A lot of those people that were jumping around in the church, they probably think there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. Now he's out there preaching like, you know, if, if you're not ready to have a baby yet, you know, go ahead and have abortion. And so the Bible warns about this. It's the antichrist spirit. And I know what I'm saying is not popular. And the reason why, you know, you get a lot of backlash for stuff like this is because I don't think he's, I don't mean this in an offensive way. He is a, a very well-known Christian music artist, especially in the African-American community, but he's not on that Kirk Franklin, you know, type level, right? But a lot of people, we, we know who he is. We've heard his music. And so people will, you'll see, like, if you go look at any of these um, artists who've done some crazy stuff, people are still following them and supporting them because they've obtained some kind of level of success. And because they have that level of success, now it gets real political. Well, don't, I can't talk about what William Murphy is doing because he's friends with so-and-so and this one is friends with that one. So if I say something about him, I'm saying something about his friend. And, and so that's really the problem that we have in this Christian influencer, Christian music circle. You know, a lot of people, they don't want to say nothing. They see something is wrong. They see questionable behavior. But these people are like gatekeepers. Right. So they're in the position of, uh, you know, authority like they, they, they got the keys to that next level of influence. So if you say something about Kirk Franklin, if you say something about this one or that one, it's going to hinder you or it's going to close doors because this is what I know. Even with this T.D. Jake situation, as I said before, guys, I don't know the details. God hasn't told me directly like this is what was happening or whatever. And I already talked about all of that. But I do know that there's people that if Bishop T.D. Jakes calls them right now to come preach at the church, they're going to do it no hesitation because of his level of influence and platform. And it's some of the same ones that are maybe taking shots or talking bad about him privately. And this is just this is just the reality. It was the same thing with Maverick City. Right. People don't care that the truth was coming out and things like that. Like they're still going to I'm still going to go to the concert. You know, this stuff with Kirk Franklin, you know, grinding on the sister, the uh, the Clark sister. Uh, selling alcohol at the events and people making all these excuses. Like we see these behaviors, but the reality is, you know, it's almost like, and I've talked about this, the Christian world is almost like, you know, some Freemasonry stuff. And I've constantly spoke out against the Freemasons and all of that demonic stuff. You know, I've made several videos about it, but the reality is we see a similar system in the church. Like in order for you to reach that next level of influence, you got to water down, right? You can't speak, don't speak about stuff that you see. You know, you go to the Dove Awards and you go to the Stellar Awards and, you know, there's people doing yoga, there's people drinking, getting high, there's people twerking, there's people fornicating. You got people living on the download, directing the choir, but don't speak about it. If you want to continue to come in these spaces, don't call it out. And so a lot of that, you know, is kind of happening, you know, and you just got to be prayed up, church. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's right. So I said, like, this ain't a bash video. Let's pray for this individual. Let's pray for the people at the church. But just because they're doing numbers, just because they're popular, uh, just because it feels good doesn't mean that it's right. There's a lot of stuff, you know, that we, we think, that we feel, because I've always been saying this for years. Hey, your soul is saved, but your flesh is not, right? Um. So your flesh, no matter how holy you think you are, no matter how righteous you are, no matter how much you fast, you kill the flesh. But until the day you die, your flesh is going to be your flesh. Right. So everybody is susceptible to following the flesh if they don't crucify the flesh. And so that's why we see people prophesying out of their flesh. We see people preaching out of their flesh. We see people singing out of their flesh. We, people, we see people rebuking people out of their flesh. And then we also see like with this prophetic movement. Maybe God did show you something, 
But then you take that information and you mishandle it, right? You mishandle heavenly information and you mix your flesh in it and now you deliver it wrong. Maybe God didn't want you to prophesy. He wanted you to intercede. This is why I say some people are not prophets. They're intercessors. Yes, God is showing you stuff, but it's not for you to put it out there. It's for you to pray about it. And that's where that, you know, you got to work out your own salvation. You got to pray about everything. Um, and then, you know, for example, people be in their flesh, right? So we we try to judge what is anointed and who is anointed based off of who we like. So if we agree with what they're saying, we say, oh, they're anointed. If we disagree with what they're saying, we don't think they're anointed because we don't really truly know how to discern who's anointed, right? Our lens for how we judge them is based on if they agree with us or not, which is flesh, right? Everybody thinks that they're right in their own eyes. Everybody thinks that they have the perfect theology in their own eyes. So if someone doesn't agree with your theology and somebody says something bad about that person, in your flesh, you want to accept it like, yeah, that is God. So the truth of the matter is there are some people that because they're jealous, because they don't like somebody, because they're hating on somebody, right? They want to believe negative things about a person or they want to see people fall. So it just gets so tricky, right? Just because you feel something and people agree with you doesn't mean it's right. So you have to be honest with yourself and say, have I really taken these things to the Lord in prayer? That's why I do these kind of videos, because everybody's doing every, you know, everybody's got their church that they're going to. And everybody says that they're a Christian. Hey, I got news for you. When Jesus come back, there's going to be a group of people that they're going to say, Lord, we did this in your name. We did that in your name. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you because if you knew me, you wouldn't have did that. If you knew me, here's another thing, right? Some people you're doing what your pastor wants you to do. You're doing what your family wants you to do, but you're not doing what God wants you to do. So who is your God? Is your church your God or is your family your God or is God your God? Because what if you spend 20, 30 years doing what they told you to do, but you didn't do what God told you to do? He going to mess around and say, it doesn't matter how many good things you do. He'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. If you knew me, I never called you to be a pastor. I wanted you to be evangelist. Or if you knew me, I don't care how much offering you gave. I wanted you to forgive your father. So the Bible says those that will enter the kingdom are the ones that do his will. Now, none of us are perfect. We're not always going to get it right. Like I said, we're still flesh, but God knows who's actually trying. God knows who's actually trying to make the attempt to live righteous, to follow his will. And that's where grace comes in. You just have to be real with yourself and say, man, am I just going with the flow? Am I just going with religion? Am I just doing the Christian thing? Or am I actually living for God? Am I actually letting him be the Lord over my life. So there's a lot of people, they have successful ministries, right? It looks successful. It looks like it's blessed, but that doesn't mean that God is with it. And here's the crazy thing, right? Everything that I'm saying, people will say the same thing about me. People say I'm a Freemason. They say God told them I'm in the Illuminati. Uh, they say um, They say all kinds of crazy stuff about me. That's why I tell you, you got to pray. You got to ask God. And the reason I move the way that I do is because I see people saying these things that are not true, right? Well, you know, the, the the Trump thing, right? People repeat it, repeat it, repeat it on the internet, and it becomes a truth to people. That's why I take the videos and I put them, you know, on YouTube for we have the receipts, right, all the way back from 2015. So if people want the truth, they can go get the truth. But a lot of times people want to believe what they want to believe, and that's where it gets dangerous. So if I don't like you, if I don't agree with your theology, people won't admit this, but it's like, I want to see you fall. My perspective is, look, I hope people I don't agree with, I hope they make it to heaven. I don't want to see anybody perish. I hope pastors from these different denominations, I hope we all make it to heaven. I'll be happy to see you. But the reality is, guess what? You know, some Christians, they don't want you to go to heaven. They want to, they want you to go to hell. Like, that's what's crazy. So it's just a fine line and everything. So I'm not trying to bash this individual, but as you guys seen from these videos, the behavior is questionable. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'll play it one more time for those of you who came in late, and we will end this live. If you already seen it, feel free to tune out. Uh, go to www.marcusrogersministries.org if you want to support what we're doing. But I'll just run through uh, some of these clips real fast at the end because um, I know people come in and out and they don't watch the whole video. So here we go. All right. Uh, first thing is here. You know, he's doing a baby dedication for the brat um, and her girlfriend. You cannot do the whole point of a baby dedication is to do what? Right. 
we're going to dedicate this baby to the Lord. We promise to train up this baby, you know, in the ways of the Lord. And obviously living that lifestyle, that is not what you are doing here. You know, so he's coming into agreement with that. And it's just wrong. Now, do we hate these people? No. You know what I'm saying? Do we wish bad upon these people? No. But we can't be so politically correct that we don't, you know, speak out against this kind of stuff, you know? So you might say, oh, okay, well, you know, he's just, he's doing something nice. It's not, you know, like a really big deal. But then we have... So right here, right now, I can't I can't judge this from the perspective of, hey, me and my church, yeah, we dance and we turn up just like that. But we usually do it to what? Christian music, um, music that we've made. Now, I don't see nothing wrong with playing the instrumental, right? If we want to put the instrumental on and we want to rock together and we might say, hey, we're dancing in the Holy Ghost, you know, I don't see nothing wrong with that. But why would you play those words? You know, I'm on hypnotic, you know, and then the whole church just saying it with their chest. I like the abundance of the heart to mouth speech. Like to me, this is why Christians shouldn't be listening to that type of music. You're not living that kind of lifestyle. You've died to the old man and the light has no fellowship with darkness, right? So, you know, even the first two videos I showed you, people still be like, eh, you know, okay, maybe you're just being religious. Well, you know, let's just keep going forward. The Bible says you'll know them by their fruit. So here's another clip. So I think that is Megan the Stallion, very you know, another foul song, something about being ratchet and savage and something to that effect. But I do know, you know, those lyrics are not good. And so then we come to this this final clip right here. Okay. And this is this is like the whopper. I don't have a right to tell you that and somebody said well some uh super religious person who got a bunch of sin in their life said well abstinence is the answer well you didn't abstain and what kills me is people out there protesting already have one I got to pause the video. I just saw a comment, something about, I'm not sure dancing is the goal of God. Remember, David danced before the Lord, and David was a man after God's own heart. I'm not saying everybody has to dance the same way, but there's nothing wrong with dancing for God. You had one in your younger years. So today, proudly, we dedicate, uh, we dedicate babies in our church. They're coming at this time uh, because uh, we believe that you I don't know. I don't know why it is, but to me, and I'm not trying to be funny. They just they seem a little spicy, like the way that they talk. Now, this is Jamal Bryant. They're both talking about abortion. And so, you know, they're saying there's nothing wrong with, you know, having abortion and children you know. are the future. Uh, but we also believe that mothers have the right to elect where it is that they are in the season and the stages of their life. And they should not be criminalized for making decisions that, that will best suit them. For I'm sick of people who don't have options trying to make me feel. Now, this next video, I just added it on. So you can kind of hear it. And I like I, I'll say it again. I said it earlier. Right. Sometimes somebody could say something that is true. But now the question is deeper levels of discernment. What is the spirit behind what you're saying? So if you look at everything else that we've played, everything else that he's done, when you listen to what he's about to say, he's pretty much going to say that some of you, it's easier for you to live righteous and holy because you're ugly, like nobody wants you. And he's saying, it's harder for me to live holy and righteous because I just look so good. They're throwing it, they're throwing it at me. And, 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 and so now it's like, okay, well, are you trying to justify why you're not living holy? Because in every type of way, somebody could not live holy or not live righteous because it's not just sexual sin, right? You can be in rebellion for, um, unforgiveness, bitterness, jealousy, gossip, slander. We could all be not living holy, right? And we can make an excuse for why we're not. But I just wanted to, you know, add this clip and you can judge for yourself. So bad, because I didn't choose right. Didn't nobody want you. It was easy for you to live right. Wasn't nobody throwing it at you. Holiness is still right. 
Holiness was your only option. Y'all talk back to me. Y'all know some of them. Y'all excuse me if this offends anybody. I don't want to offend you, but they were too heavy to have options. Ridiculous. You didn't have options because you had a body odor. I'm just going to keep it real. When you look like this, you got options. So, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, pride there. You know, apparently, I guess he he thinks he's Denzel or, or something like that. Um, or Idris or whatever, whatever you ladies like. You know, I always joke with the sisters at the church about it. You know, <clears throat> the single sisters. I'm always saying, you know, which which brothers y'all like out there or whatever. But um, apparently he puts himself, you know, he ranks himself that highly. He thinks very highly of himself. And so, like I said, I'll, I'll end this video. I don't want it to be too long, but I don't do these videos for clout. I don't do these videos to bash. I'm not trying to condemn this man. It's not my job to throw this man in hell. But I do these videos because I'm always thinking about the baby believer. And I, I feel like God has grown me in wisdom on how to deliver these videos so people can maybe better understand you know, my heart, why do it? I understand that the Bible says in the last days there's going to be perilous times, doctrines of devils, seducing spirits, pretty much that there will be, you know, a great falling away, a lot of foolery going on in the church, a lot of stuff um, that God has nothing to do with. And so the reality is when you have these people, whether they're on the pulpit, whether it's a musical artist, you know, Paul says we're sermons written in the, in the flesh. So there's people who look up to you because of your success, because of your fame. And they say, well, if, if Bishop William Murphy said it's okay to have an abortion or it's okay to do this or it's okay to do that, then I can do it. You know, if Lecrae says it's okay to listen to Cardi B and Corinthians, you know, how he recently, you know, said, then they say, well, oh, it's okay for me to do it. And it's dangerous because even if we don't, even if we want to argue about, okay, secular music, for example, maybe some of you feel you can listen to, you know, Cardi B and Drake and Beyonce and you're still saved. Maybe you really believe that. But Everybody also is not on the same level. So maybe you get away with listening to Beyonce, but there's people that Beyonce is really going to affect their spirit. It's going to take them back to that carnal man. It's going to take them back to that, 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 that worldly stuff. So it's just, you got to be just really, really careful. And like I said, people say the same stuff about me, right? There's the Christian world. You know, there's people who attack me. They say, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to lead people to hell. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Pray about everything. Don't put no man, no woman on a pedestal. And just please understand the message that I'm trying to convey by using these examples is that, you know, the world is in the, uh, the church is in a bad place and the world is in the end times. So you really got to walk in wisdom. You really got to make sure that you're studying the Bible for yourself because people are just saying anything on this Internet. Right. Does it line up with the Bible? All right. Love you guys. Be blessed. Uh, please go keep streaming that um, flexed up song that I just dropped with Child Like CC. It's doing very well. Uh, the Soul album is doing very well. You know, I appreciate the support. Go to www.marcusrodgersministries.org if you want to support what we're doing here in Chicago. I'm expecting 2024 to be one of the craziest years for the kingdom that we have ever seen. Like, I know we're going to have some ups and downs, but I'm really believing for it to be a great year. Love you guys. Be blessed. Have a wonderful evening in Jesus' name. I'm out of here.